Hi guys, it's your science teacher here back with a, another video. This time I'm going to go through the whole of the topic, which is B18, biodiversity and ecosystems. This is the last topic on biology paper two. So without further ado, let's get into it. The topic of biodiversity and ecosystems starts off by looking at what actually biodiversity is and biodiversity can be defined as all of the different species living in a certain ecosystem. Now, maintaining biodiversity is incredibly important because of the fact that a biodiverse environment is usually a stable environment. This is because species can rely on other species in order to survive. Maybe it's a predator prey relationship. Maybe it's even a relationship between a plant and an animal. Biodiversity is, however, being threatened, and this can mainly be attributed due to the human population explosion. And this basically means that humans are taking over the planet and their numbers are growing massively and other species are unfortunately um, having to suffer because of this. Now, if we look at some causes for why the fact that humans population has increased rapidly over the past um, thousand, two thousand years is because of the fact that less people are dying um, of illnesses. This is due to the fact that we have better health care nowadays. And also um, we spread information a lot uh, better throughout the world. Uh, if there is a pandemic, for example, coronavirus, um, the whole world will have the information and hopefully access to a vaccine in order to tackle this. As well as this, um, people now are genu generally living healthier lifestyles. Um, it's due to the fact we um, know about what causes illness, we can um, reduce um, the chance of non-communicable disease. And as well as this, we also have no natural predators. Nothing is walking down the high street and looking to eat us. And all this has resulted in there now being 7 billion humans on planet earth due to this rapid human population explosion we are now putting massive pressures on our world due to the fact that we are draining it of its natural resources things called finite resources that are starting to run out in addition to this uh, with more people means that more space is needed this is resulting in there being less uh, space in order for animals and more space needed uh, in order to house all of these people. Due to the fact that the human population has increased so rapidly, it's increased the rate that we are polluting our planet. One way we pollute the planet is polluting the land. And an example of this is the amount of plastic waste that we have lying around. And plastic waste um, is incredibly bad for the environment due to the fact that it is non-biodegradable. This means that it does not break down in um, our uh, ecosystems and therefore it can get um, eaten by animals and uh, plastics can be toxic if they are eaten and ingested by animals and it can travel through our ecosystems. Also with the amount of landfill we need for a lot of the waste we create we are taking up a lot of space that used to be uh, land which was free to the wild. As well as looking at land pollution, we need to also consider water pollution. We are considerably damaging our water and especially our rivers and sea ecosystems. 
One way we do this is by putting different fertilizers uh, on our crops. Now, when it rains, these fertilizers get uh, washed into our river ecosystems and they can cause uh, different plant life and fish uh, to die when they get into that ecosystem. We can use something called a bio indicator in order uh, to look at how uh, we are affecting um, the different river ecosystems. For example, uh, some shrimp need really clean water in order to survive. And if we see the shrimp's numbers decreasing, then we know that we have polluted uh, that river system. Also, with chemicals that go into uh, the water, we get something called bioaccumulation. Basically, what this means is um, that it will travel through um, the ecosystem and it usually affects the top predators more uh, because it gets more toxic and more concentrated as it travels through the ecosystem. A good example of bioaccumulation is mercury and you can find mercury in incredibly high concentration in species of shark. This is why it's actually toxic uh, to eat sharks and you, you can only actually eat the fins usually if it's been cooked for a very long time. Um, but we get bioaccumulation which makes it incredibly toxic to eat them. Now, we are looking to reduce the amount of water pollution um, by banning certain fertilizers and also making sure all our sewage is treated. In fact, a lot of sewage puts in a lot of water pollution. Uh, just think about all the drugs that are ingested uh, by people and when they go to the toilet and it gets flushed down, well, that water is going to get returned back to rivers at some stage and the drugs that the human ingested will get into the ecosystem as well as land and water pollution humans are having a massive massive effect on air quality and we are polluting the air massively one reason for this is the amount of fossil fuels we are burning we rely on fossil fuels for energy as well as also for transport Some examples of fossil fuels include coal, oil, and natural gas. One gas that gets released when we burn these fossil fuels is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is incredibly bad for the environment due to the fact that it contributes to the greenhouse effect. And the greenhouse effect uh, subsequently leads to global warming. Global warming is predicted to have loads and loads of social, health, environmental and economic uh, problems associated with it uh, in the next few uh, years to come. As the climate gets hotter, what will start to happen is the ice caps um, will continue to melt and this will cause uh, rising sea levels and associated with the rising sea levels um, you will also get loss of houses um, which will have a massive social and economic effect uh, in these areas. Also there will be um, incredible uh, environmental concerns because of the fact we will have more extreme weathers, we will have uh, droughts uh, that uh, will mean that land uh, can no longer grow crops there and um, people end up dying if, it, if there's not enough water. As well as this, uh, some animals won't be able to adapt quick enough to the change and we could see um, more animals uh, going extinct due to global warming. Global warming is going to increasingly put pressures on governments to look at different resources other than fossil fuels in order for us to uh, get our energy and be able to transport people around the world. Uh, because if we do not do this, uh, then we could have all of these terrible effects. 
Another gas that is emitted into our atmosphere when we burn fossil fuels is sulfur dioxide. It's a key impurity in uh, coal. Um, coal is contains a lot of sulfur, and uh, when we burn the sul the sulfur, it mixed with the oxygen in the atmosphere, creating sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide, when it reacts with the water in clouds, uh, creates acid rain. And acid rain is having drastic effects on our environment uh, due to it changing the soil pH. Now, when the pH of the soil is altered, this means that trees can no longer grow and they start to die. As well as changing uh, the soil pH, also we change the pH of water uh, in um, river ecosystems and that can cause uh, fish and other aquatic life uh, to also perish. Keeping on going, uh, looking at the negative impact that humans are having on the environment, we'll start to look at uh, deforestation as well. Uh, and deforestation is the cutting down of trees um, in order for buildings and in order for land for more farming and space for houses. Um, now, deforestation has a lot of negative impacts on the environment. Um, one being the fact that uh, trees store carbon. So when we um, cut down trees which photosynthesize which removes carbon from the atmosphere we actually will be putting car that carbon back into the atmosphere because of the fact those trees are no longer there taking carbon out of our atmosphere and storing it underground as well as deforestation we are also getting rid of a another uh, key carbon storers which are peat bogs and peat bogs are basically plant matter that hasn't fully decayed and the reason why the plant matter can't fully decay um, is because of the fact that peat bogs don't contain enough oxygen for the decay to happen. Now peat bogs are getting removed from environments because of the fact we are using them for fertilizers. Being such great stores of carbon, uh, we are removing it and adding it to fertilizers and then spraying it on fields and removing that carbon that was stored in the ground. As well as just looking at the impact on the um, atmosphere uh, from removing peat bogs and deforestation, just think of all the specific wildlife that is present in forests and even in peat bogs. There are specific uh, types of plants that cannot grow anywhere else in the world. And if we remove the peat bogs and we remove the trees, then those uh, plants or animal species uh, could end up perishing. Luckily, the issues that we have discussed in today's video um, have not gone unnoticed uh, within the scientific community and many things are being done in order to try and combat uh, the effect that humans are having on the environment. Uh, one way that we're trying to maintain biodiversity is we are focusing on uh, key endangered animals. These are animals um, that have, um, for some reason, uh, become into a position uh, where their numbers are incredibly low. An example would be the giant panda as pictured. And we actually, uh, we have breeding programs in order to um, try and increase their number and hopefully reintroduce them into the wild um, when we have cre created a uh, big enough space for them to go and they'll be more safe and less at risk from maybe poaching and um, they can live out a more happy life. As well as uh, breeding programs, we are also trying to reduce the deforestation. And in some areas, in fact, uh, looking to reforest areas uh, where we have uh, cut down um, 
large areas of forest land and this will mean that there's more space for the animals that live there and hopefully increase the biodiversity again in the ecosystem. Also, we are looking to recycle a lot more of our waste. This means that it doesn't end up in the ecosystems and toxic chemicals uh, don't end up flowing through food chains and bioaccumulating um, and animals have their safe space in order to live. Also, countries are looking to reduce their carbon emissions. When they do this, this will mean that there's a slowing rate of global warming and animals might have time in order to make the adaptations needed if there are small changes in their ecosystem. If you are doing uh, combined science, really well done for getting to the end of the video. If you're doing triple science, there is just a little bit more for you to do. What we are going to look at now is we are going to look at um, our food consumption and also we are going to look at how maybe we can uh, move to a more sustainable way of producing our food. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, how we get our food now and the impact of some of our foods. So if we look at um, our agriculture industry, a lot of our food that we consume is meat. And meat is incredibly bad for the environment due to the fact that um, meat eaters need to consume um, some plant matter, for example, cows, they get through a large uh, sum of grass along with other uh, supplements to their diet. In addition to this, um, our meat is also um, producing high levels of methane. Now, methane is a greenhouse gas and when the animal uh, farts and poos, that's putting a lot of methane into the atmosphere. If we look down here at our pyramid of biomass, this shows how much energy uh, gets lost as we uh, move through the different uh, parts of our pyramid. So our primary producers, they turn the sun's energy into food, don't they? So if we got all our um, food from plants, we would be turning just 100% of that energy uh, into the food that we need. However, we don't. If we consume meat, however, that is, uh, energy is lost. Energy is lost when the animal is living. Um, it will lose some energy through feces when it uh, poos and also through growth and respiration. So as a cow grows or a chicken grows, it's losing some of the energy uh, that it was having from the plant. Now, if we lived a total vegan or vegetarian lifestyle, um, there would be a lot less pressure on um, the environment because of the fact we would just be using plant matter and we would just be skipping one of these steps. Now, we're a secondary consumer, aren't we? If we are consuming cows or chicken, this means that we have to eat a lot, a lot of meat to get the energy that we could get from plants. Now, due to the human population and the large growth in the number of people on the planet, uh, people are unfortunately do not have food security. This basically means that we are now running out of the amount of food that we need um, to have a healthy lifestyle. And over time, food security is going to go down with global warming and the number of people uh, on the planet increasing. Now, food security is also being affected by, um, as well as the human population explosion, uh, the amount of disease that can spread uh, through different crops or through livestock that can affect food security. Also, people's diets in developed countries um, are changing constantly and that is putting more um, pressure um, on 
the less developed countries that maybe don't have as much food. And of course, something else that will affect uh, food security is the economy in agriculture. If it's no longer economically viable for farmers to make a certain food, they will stop making it. And um, the, ec the economy massively plays a f an effect on our food security. But all hope is not lost. We can find ways of sustainable farming. Now, the word sustainable means to meet the needs of today without hindering future generations. An example of a sustainable farming technique is being shown in the picture here. Now, one thing they're doing here is they're making use of a greenhouse. Um, inside a greenhouse, they're not going to get have to put loads of pesticides on the crops because a pest can't get in and they're going to maximize yield with the high temperatures uh, that they can achieve in a greenhouse. As well as greenhouse farming, we also um, use fish uh, farms uh, in order to uh, meet the demand of fish that humans consume. It's incredibly damaging to uh, fish the oceans and by using farms in order to produce our fish, this is a greener way of doing this because of the fact we're not taking them out of the natural environment that they've come from and a lot of the fishing techniques that were used, uh, for example, explosion fishing or using uh, nets that can break up the bottom of the ocean floor, uh, we will just be getting our fish from a farm. And like discussed already, we can reduce our reliance on meat. This is perhaps the biggest uh, change that we can make in order to um, become more sustainable in our food production. Now, that is the end of today's video. I hope you have really enjoyed it. Please remember, if you did enjoy today's video, please drop it a like and subscribe to the channel.